Hey everyone, my name is Corel, and today we're going to be taking a look at yet another From the Depths weapon system, namely Particle Cannons. These are a very powerful type of weaponry. They consume a lot of energy. Uh, they do require that you put that energy into batteries in order to make use of it. So you can't power these directly from engine power. They have to go through batteries. Uh, these are a hit scan weapon, so there is no evading them. There is no way of mitigating these things. There's really no counter to them at all other than distance. Distance is a pretty hard counter. These are not designed as extreme ranged weapons. Uh, you can get them to be pretty long ranged with the correct set of uh, tools and configuration, but generally speaking, these are not intended to engage in long distance combat. Uh, cannons and missiles, good well out to two kilometers or so. Particle cannons are gonna fall off pretty much at the one kilometer mark or less. The one kilometer mark is kind of an extreme range where uh, if you get all the right factors mixed in there, you're going to be able to get out to that reliably. Uh, outside that range, you're going to start losing a lot of damage, you're going to start losing a lot of accuracy, and they just become pretty much worthless. So uh, we're going to take a look at the various components here. Uh, particle cannons are all about trade-offs, right? So you've got a ton of different trade-offs in how to uh, build. The first trade-off is your construction size. Uh, particle cannons have to have this particle cannon block. This is the main block, similar to the advanced cannon firing piece. This is where the boom comes out of, for the most part. And you've got all these tubes that come out of it. A particle cannon block has five different ports on it that you can use to attach tubes to. Uh, the tubes are what generate the actual particle beams. You can have up to five of these coming out of a single particle cannon, so you have five different tube outlets. What's awkward about this is that they are not in a mirrorable position. So you can see one's coming out the bottom on the left side and on the top on the right side. So I've got a very awkward thing where I can't really uh, use a mirror line until I get certain distance away. And even then there's some weird stuff going on there. So yeah, particle cannons in general uh, are going to have a little bit of an issue with mirror lines. Take that as you will. It's uh, kind of annoying when you're building them but you don't really need to put a lot of complexity into the construction itself. So yeah, take it or leave it. Uh, moving on, we've got the particle tubes and particle tube corners. These are what compose in each individual tube. Uh, the tubes are directional. They have a front and a back. You cannot get the two mixed up or your particle cannon will not connect. Uh, so make sure that those are pointing the correct direction. Similarly, the tube corners also are directional. So you need to make sure that those are pointing the correct direction as well. Uh, these both provide additional length for the particle tube. Tube length makes your uh, cannon more powerful at the cost of draining more energy per shot. So uh, the longer this is, the larger this is, the more energy you can put into that individual shot. Down here we've got the particle tube terminator. That You put this on the end of the arm. You always want this on the end of the arm. If you don't have this on the end of a particle tube arm, you're gonna have a bad day. Uh, the particle tube or the particle cannon will fire out the end of the tube and into your vehicle. Uh, not what you want. Don't do that. Uh, and similarly, in thinking about how you're going to construct this, if the particle tube is damaged or destroyed, the particle cannon particles themselves are going to shoot out the ends of the tubes and into whatever they happen to be pointing towards. Be careful with that, it can hurt. So uh, make sure you have a terminator on the end and you're good to go, or you can use a particle input port. The particle input port allows you to wrap a tube around from one input to another input and will let you connect the two in order to kind of double up. You'll get a considerable amount more power out of this but you are using up two of the ports on the particle cannon. I don't find that to be a downside necessarily, but that's up to you. We've also got the particle accelerator lens. This acts as basically an alternate firing piece. Uh, if you don't want to expose this huge, fragile, costly particle cannon to the outside of the vehicle, uh, then you can come over here and do something like I've done here. This thing is not particularly durable. It's got 500 health and eight armor. It's pretty heavy, it costs a thousand materials, not something you want getting blown up every few seconds. So you can embed that back in your vehicle and run a bunch of tubes out here 
to get to these uh, kind of particle uh, lenses out here. And I could spread these out across the front of the vehicle. I could uh, spread them out a lot more than I have here, in fact. And that would make it pretty resilient to damage because even though one particle tube might get broken, I've still got four others firing. Uh, the only downside to this is obviously the kind of weird snaky nature of these tubes sometimes, and it can require a fair bit of bulk to pull this off. However, what you get when you do this is five or ten actually different beams. These uh, particle lenses uh, basically fire two beams at half power, so uh, pretty useful there. Now the next component here is the particle melee lens, and these you can have a bit of fun with. Essentially, you are generating a particle uh, through each tube and firing it out at a... well, it can be a static arc, or you can do something more interesting with it, and that arc will then return to the main uh, particle cannon component, and yeah, you can do some pretty wild and wacky things with this. Uh, so I'll get into that later when we get into the configuration for the particle cannons, but just know that this is an option, even if it's a pretty weird option. All right, moving along. All right, so next up we've got the particle cannon customization window. This is accessed by hitting Q on the particle cannon itself. Uh, you've got horizontal... Well, oh, this is a series of trade-offs here, first off. Uh, you've got six different trade-offs here, each of which kind of define the various parameters that your uh, particle cannon is going to use. You've got horizontal versus vertical focus. Uh, this basically determines whether you want to be able to aim further to the sides or ver further up and down. Uh, the specifics on that are going to depend totally on your vehicle, but the default of 0.5 is usually pretty good because it just means that you're going to be able to aim equally uh, in any direction. You've also got damage and attenuation. This basically means that you're trading off uh, initial damage, the further the right this slider gets, you can see the more initial damage I have down here in this bottom area, but uh, the more I put this up, uh, you can see the attenuation per kilometer goes way up, uh, to the point where, at this point, I'm getting zero damage at one kilometer. So uh, that's pretty rough. That's, that's, that's not really going to be useful if I'm trying to fire this at long range. Now on the opposite end of the spectrum, I've got uh, attenuation of 3% here, and if I turn it all the way down here, you can see the initial damage down here is tiny. It's, it's pathetic compared to what it was before. However, I'm only getting 3% attenuation per kilometer. Uh, that's not particularly useful because the particle cannon is going to become incredibly inaccurate after one kilometer, but you can kind of do something with this. It's, yeah, yeah. Uh, generally, I, I tend to prefer leaving this towards the higher end of the spectrum, just because you know the particle cannon's not going to be sh shooting things accurately at long range anyway, so losing 75% of your damage per kilometer, not that big of a deal if you've got a huge amount of damage to begin with. So yeah, I tend to leave that 0.5 or higher. Uh, at 0.5, we've got um, a reasonable amount of damage here, and we're not losing all that much of it per kilometer of distance. Also here we have Field of Fire. Now, Field of Fire is less of a trade-off than the other ones, but uh, generally speaking, the further or the closer to straightforward your shots are, the more accurate they're going to be. So keeping your Field of Fire fairly low will limit your particle cannon and limit how far of a range it's going to have, but, uh, or rather, limit the uh, arc of fire that it has but it's going to keep that fire very accurate. Uh, I tend to like 10 degrees or less. Uh, the downside to that being that particle cannons are fairly hard to turret because they are large. If you're going to try and put a particle cannon on a turret, you have to make sure that that turret is mostly below decks, and then that leads to all sorts of interesting Tetris with particle cannon corners that uh, if any of that gets damaged, you shoot particle cannon beams throughout your entire ship, and it's it's it gets really ugly really quickly. So uh, yeah, generally speaking, you don't want these on turrets, which means, of course, that they are, have a fairly limited field of fire. Uh, increasing that here will lower the 
uh, weapon's overall accuracy, but it will let you fire at more potential targets. The other way you can uh, help increase that is by having your vehicle do the moving for you instead of trying to put this on a turret. Uh, generally speaking, I tend to prefer that method, but that's uh, places of quite a lot of limitations really on how your vehicle is built and what it's capable of. The next trade-off here is efficiency versus overclock. Now efficiency, it, it, well it's efficient, it's energy efficiency. Um, when you turn this up, you start consuming huge amounts of energy to charge this particle cannon. Uh, the energy is subtracted from the battery at the time of the shot. So in this case, uh, you can see for a 10 second charge, I have uh, 76,000 energy used. So that means I need to store 76,000 energy in my batteries every 10 seconds in order to keep this particle cannon firing. Overall, that would lead to an energy drain of 7,600. So I would need to have at least 7,600 engine power in order to fire this consistently. Now, what I've got here, uh, this is at an overclock of two. And if I go back to overclock one, you'll see that I am losing half my damage. So this is a linear increase to damage, but you'll notice that this is 19,000 energy per shot. This is 76,000 energy per shot. This is extremely energy inefficient to boost this even up to an overclock of two. So be very careful how you go about your overclocking. Very often you're better off just adding more particle tubes and uh, increasing your damage that way rather than trying to deal with overclock rating. Unless your vehicle has a ton of engine power, usually that is a more efficient way to go. You've also got damage versus inaccuracy here, where uh, zero means you do basically no damage but are perfectly accurate, and one means you are dealing maximum damage but aren't very accurate. Now, generally speaking, if you're just trying to make a particle cannon that's good out to one kilometer, having this all the way up is fine. If you're trying to get out any further than that, then yeah, you're going to need charge time of 10 seconds and you're going to need to start turning down your damage. And that starts stinking pretty quickly. Makes it very difficult to get a very good particle cannon set up. So uh, yeah, I tend to like to leave this 0.5 or up, but that's personal preference. Another thing I like to do is to always leave the charge time at 10 seconds. Uh, if I change this down to 1 here, uh, you'll see that we have an initial damage of 38,000. If I change this to 1, I get 3,800. So this is exactly 10% of the original 38,000. So I'm not increasing my DPS at all. However, uh, the higher your charge time is, the more accurate your particle is for a longer distance. So uh, generally speaking, you aren't going to get a very accurate particle at one second uh, at any sort of distance. And if you go down as fast as this can fire, it gets pretty crazy. Uh, let me just, yeah, let me uh, hop over here and uh, demonstrate this. So I've turned this all the way down, and yeah. Please note that those are not ricocheting off the top of the armor. Those are actually just missing for the most part. Yeah. Oh, also particle cannons are kind of noisy. Sorry about that. Um, moving on, we've got... Uh, a charge time of 10 seconds in comparison, and you can probably see that stays accurate much, much longer. All right, so the next thing we need to look at here is the damage types. Obviously, you can customize the colors of the particle cannon. You can do whatever you want to with colors. Uh, the preview is a little bit odd. I think it's actually inverted from what it should be, because all colors is white and no colors should be black, but... Uh, They've kind of got the values in order there. Uh, anyway, all right, the next thing to look at is your particle cannon damage types. First off here, we've got piercing. This gives you an armor pierce of 15, and it pretty much just applies this damage through any block it passes through. That will deal a ton of damage. This is what I generally refer to as the window maker setting. Because, yeah, it, it, it just punches a window literally through everything. Just, just straight through. Uh, yeah, doesn't much matter what's in the way, this is going through. Next up we have the explosive shock damage type. This creates an explosion at the point of impact. This behaves exactly like all the other explosive damage types. It obeys all the same, same explosive damage rules, 
Uh, it just is created by a particle cannons instead of a cannon shell or missile. So uh, this setting is really pretty straightforward and does, for the most part, what you'd expect. You fire it, it makes things go boom. Now it does apply quite a bit of explosive damage and it does so in a pretty large radius, but it's not going to do the most damage uh, compared to the other impact types. So this is generally not my preferred uh, setting here. You can see it'll go through two layers of metal pretty good. Uh, if I, it, depending on what I hit with it, uh, it can do quite a bit of damage, but generally speaking, when you start dealing with the heavier armor types over here, it's just not gonna do a whole lot. The next damage type up is EMP. Now, EMP is pretty straightforward. It's exactly the same as the cannon shells and missile types that we've looked at. Uh, it's just 25% as strong. Explosive shock is only half of the damage potential of the cannon. Uh, you can see here that's 39,818, whereas if we go with piercing, we have 152,000 there. So uh, yeah, uh, explosive shock is uh, pretty weak in comparison to piercing. And likewise, EMP is similarly weak. Uh, it doesn't deal a whole lot of damage. However, EMP doesn't need to do a whole lot of damage in order to fry electronics components because it will seek out those connected electronics components through pretty much any amount of metal. Uh, this particular target is very well insulated by glass blocks being pretty much the only thing that uh, EMP could travel through, and those just don't carry electricity. So uh, this particular target isn't really affected by EMP all that much, but if I was to, let's say, put an AI block out here on the corner of this vehicle, uh, let's just go ahead and throw an AI mainframe out here, and we'll go ahead and give this a test fire. Uh, in this case, it looks like we are still not seeing a valid EMP conduit. So it looks like we are still not seeing that EMP traverse. Uh, that is just a problem with this particular target. Most of the time, this is going to deal significant damage to uh, electronic components on the target vehicle. You can see there we were a little bit closer, and the EMP just um, sought out and destroyed that AI mainframe like it wasn't even... A big deal at all. Uh, moving on, we have probably my favorite setting for particle cannons, impact. Now, very similar to thump damage from missiles and regular uh, APS cannon shells, impact does exactly the same thing. Uh, it has an armor pierce of 15, so not huge, not tiny, and it's just going to kind of radiate damage out from around the point of impact. Now, that sounds pretty vanilla, uh, but this is a lot of damage. This is a lot more than most numbers that you'll get out of any type of missile or cannon. And it just creates absurd amounts of missing blocks on a target vehicle. Yeah, that's not exactly light armor that I've got there. And this punched a hole straight through it and opened up a five meter wide gap hole in the center. And the best part is it doesn't even really matter what type of armor I'm hitting. If I hit really heavy armor over here, I get a slightly smaller hole, but it still punched a hole straight through. If I hit two meters of metal over here, it punches a nice big hole. Yeah, it's pretty much going to punch a hole straight through anything that you throw it at. And there's really no stopping it except by not getting hit. This is one of the uh, worst and hardest to counter types of weaponry to deal with. Uh, that's, this is one of the reasons particle cannons are almost always banned in tournaments. So uh, that's it for this particular uh, particle cannon. I'm going to get this target repaired up and we'll go take a look at the next one. So this particle, first particle cannon we looked at is a loop particle cannon. You can see it has a particle that exits one beam, goes all the way around in this kind of U shape, and comes back around and joins back up with the uh, corresponding input port on the opposite side. Doesn't really matter what input port we go into, but what does matter is that we use this import, input port block and connect it to one of the particle cannon tubes uh, on the main cannon block. So uh, this does have to be connected to one of these ports directly. 
I could not, for instance, stick this particle cannon input port uh, over here right in the center. Uh, that would be where I would want to normally put it naturally, but it just doesn't work. You have to connect it directly to the port. So uh, yeah, little bit of caution advice there. I've blew up that cannon more than once trying to build that particular demo. Anyway, moving back over here, I've got the particle output lenses uh, or particle accelerator lenses out here. And I've got the particle cannon control block itself out facing this direction. Now, this is a little bit awkward because you would think coming over here and seeing this particle cannon block that I would be firing it this way. But no, I can't aim this direction. I press control here and it does nothing. Uh, or I could go over here, I could uh, try and control these and fire them over here. Again, I'm pressing control, nothing, I'm getting nothing. Uh, what I have to do is come over to this particle cannon block and aim in the direction of these lenses in order to fire the cannon. And then I get to fire a nice powerful shot and it blows a nice hole in the target. However, you'll notice that that was a little lackluster compared to this particle cannon over here. Yeah, these loops are really good. Yeah, I, I highly recommend these. Can't recommend them enough. Uh, this particular set over here actually has far more pipes in it, far more expensive components, and uh, really all I'm getting out of it is some damage resilience. Because effectively, uh, when I do this, I double up on damage around this single pipe uh, by going into another port, and I, at the same time, uh, condense that down to one beam. Now over here, these are getting split into two beams and getting their damage halved uh, for each of these pipes, which are only coming out of one port. So effectively, each of these pipes is doing one quarter of the damage of this one pipe over here. And that's not exactly the way to get the most efficiency out of the blocks you're building. Uh, however, this is much easier to spread out across a hole I could run these pipes out to the wings of an aircraft or what have you. Uh, it would be a lot harder to break all five of these compared to, you know, shoot any one component in this system and the entire thing breaks. So uh, very much uh, more designed for dealing with incoming damage, but at the same time, just not going to do as much damage of its own. Uh, over here, Generally with this type of cannon, since I'm going to be firing a lot more shots, impact starts to lose some of its usefulness. Likewise, explosive shock here, you can see I'm doing a lot of tiny little chunks of damage. And you, if I fire a shot here, it's just going to kind of... I mean, it does a good chunk of damage, don't get me wrong. It blows a nice hole in things. But it's also just not really doing the kinds of damage that I would like to heavy armor. If I go over here and fire at some... Uh, heavier armor. You can see uh, when I start hitting that, it doesn't even make it all the way through that armor with all of that and already start on the damage too from the previous shot. It just doesn't have the thump to get through that. Uh, pun not intended. Uh, so explosive shock, again, not my favorite. I'm going to repair up the target again here and I'll show you what I really like to use these multi-emitter setups for. So when you're dealing with these multi-emitter setups, uh, explosive shock is going to lose you damage. Impact is not really going to lose you damage, but it's not really going to get you anything either. Piercing shot is where it's at. If you look at these damage numbers, we have 10,500 with an armor pierce of 15. If we take a look at, say, a metal beam, we've got a metal beam with an armor class of 15, which means that we get no damage penalty or bonus against this type of armor, and 2,100 health. That means, ignoring armor stacking bonuses, a piercing shot with a uh, damage output here of 10,500 could go through five of these. Yeah, uh, not quite five. It would be four and severely damage the fifth. And that's just one of these arms. So if I start uh, actually firing at this target again, you can see all five of these go through that fairly heavy armor. And if I aim further to the right, once this reloads, yeah, you can see that punches right on through that area as well. And since you're firing so many more particles, you are effectively uh, spreading that piercing damage that would normally just make one singular hole through the entire structure. You're spreading that out a lot. 
and that can be very valuable when you're trying to hit something critical inside a vehicle. Rather than just winging one armor block off the corner of your target, you can actually get in there and have several chances to hit critical internal components. So that's one of my favorite methods of using the lens emitters. Over here, we've got the actual melee lens. And I'm gonna go and repair our target up again and move it over here, and I'll show you exactly how this works. All right, so first off, throw everything you know about your settings window over here out the window. None of it matters anymore. Uh, instead, what matters is, with these melee lenses, this set over here. Uh, I can say I want to connect to a specific arm, and I will draw a line to that arm. Or I can say I want to connect to uh, a, the main particle cannon, and I'll connect to that emitter instead. Uh, whatever uh, touches these beams will get damage dealt to it. So um, there's a bunch of different ways of configuring these beams. You can just kind of, yeah, you can drag these things around. You can do whatever you want to with them. You can change these uh, ranges around. Um, yeah, you can do a lot of weird stuff with this. And you can activate it and this will turn the beam on to where it can deal damage. Now, these particle uh, melee lenses you can see that these have an immense amount of range. And you might think, hey, these have a huge amount of range. I can start dealing melee damage to things that are a long distance away, right? Not exactly. So if I go to a very vanilla setup with these and just go to no input shift at all, and I max out my output ranges, I have a very simple arc between these two particles, or these two lenses. So this almost reaches out to here, and if I start bringing the uh, actual armor test block closer, you'll see what that starts to do to it. We're just going to go to 50 meters here, and you can see we are dealing damage to those. And I've got a few repair tentacles in here just to help, but you can see that this particular uh, particle cannon pipe is dealing damage starting going out here, and it would come back if it did not lose its actual damage output by the time it got out there. So uh, based on this arm length here, this is dealing a certain fixed amount of damage. Also based on the range to the target, the closer the armor block is, the more damage this will deal. So if I was to bring this up to say 10 meters distance, then these repair tentacles are very rapidly going to, well, let's, uh, <laughs> let's try 20. Uh, the repair tentacles are very going to very rapidly going to lose their ability to deal with this damage simply because there's going to be more damage coming through. Uh, you can see we're starting to deal some damage to that heavy armor block in the back. If I was to go ahead and wipe these out, you can see it will work its way through. It will start dealing damage to that heavy armor beam. It will come back through this heavy armor beam, and then it will work its way back through this armor over here. Uh, if I wanted to simultaneously work from this arm, I could set this up as well by turning this beam on. So uh, in order to do that, I would just set up these, turn this on, and now if I have uh, repair tentacles repairing both sides, you will see that these both start getting destroyed simultaneously, despite the fact that in the back here, these heavy armor blocks are still in place. So you can see here, based on the stream of blocks falling down, that we are actually doing a considerable amount of damage very quickly. Uh, that's due to the range that this target is at. Uh, this type of melee particle cannon is a great thing to combine with harpoons, uh, mostly because it is extremely flexible. Uh, I haven't shown you how I did the first setup, so we'll get into that here. Now, you might see this here, use chalkboard checkbox, and think, chalkboard? Well, that's an awful weird term. Let's see what's in there. And, oh, oh, oh my, what's all this nonsense? Okay, so uh, yeah, chalkboard is basically a way that you can apply a mathematical function to the lateral and vertical shift of the beam, which means that basically I can tell this thing to move around based on several different factors, like the distance to the enemy, the game time in seconds, and the constant pi. I can use all of those as inputs here, along with some mathematical functions. That means, if you know a little bit of trigonometry, I can set up time as a variable in here and use the cosine and sine functions 
to create an oscillation effect. And you can see here exactly what I'm getting out of that uh, when I have this chalkboard enabled. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, you, get, you can get some pretty funky effects going on here. Uh, and if I was to activate these, again, I'll activate them on the left side first. You can see that that is dragging that beam through all of those blocks. It's not really giving it enough time to damage and destroy any one block, uh, but over time, it's going to very rapidly wear down and chew through everything that it hits. If I was to remove these repair units, uh, yeah, you can see it's pretty much going to carve a circle out of each area in front of that particle emitter. So, uh, yeah, this is potentially very useful. However, I have found that this can kind of break the game in some cases. While recording this tutorial, I have found uh, in a number of cases that using this too much just leads to the game crashing after a while. Presumably that's because this time gets too high and dealing with the cosine and sine functions, those have input limits probably, and yeah, that probably just gets some sort of uh, integer overrun or something along those lines. Uh, long story short, this type of moving beam probably isn't something that you want to do, but hey, you can if you want to. Just be careful you don't crash the game. That's not a good time. So that is the last of the particle cannons that I have to demonstrate for you here. Uh, that particle cannons are a super powerful weapon system. Uh, really, the only counter to them is range. So if you're up against something that has a particle cannon on it, stay away. Stay far, far away from this thing. Uh, if you're using missiles, uh, even lasers have a better range than particle cannons. So yeah, stay away. Whatever it costs, stay away. Uh, these things will shred you at close range. They have a higher damage output per second than most APS cannons these days. The only thing that they uh, deal less damage than is probably cram cannons. Speaking of cram cannons, that's what the subject of the next tutorial is, so I hope I'll see you then, and have a good day.